Hello dancers and welcome to day 15 of our Corona Quarantine and Daily Vlog. Teacher Joel here talking to you today in this video about the feather finish in the Slow Fox Trot. Again, as usual, we're going to cover technique over three different levels, a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced level. Please make sure that you go through all the levels in order. Make sure you understand it before you go on to the next level. Let's get ourselves started with the leads of the beginner level. And specifically, I'd like to talk about feet. If you notice, I've got my red socks on, and we're going to be really, really specific about where our feet are pointing and where our body is pointing for the leads. Gentlemen, leads, as we're dancing our feather finish, here's my line of dance. I'm dancing backwards, line of dance on step number one. On step number two, the alignment is the left foot. Step number two is pointing diagonal to the wall. So here's my diagonal wall alignment. But if you notice, my body has not turned with my foot during step number two. What we say is my body has turned less. So if you notice, here is the alignment of my foot and here is the alignment of my body. This is the perfect position now for me to now continue for step number three to step my right foot outside partner in CBMP for the third step. Now, if I had gentlemen turned with my body and my foot the same amount, as I go into step number three, I don't have a proper body alignment with my partner. Either I've turned too much, brought my partner in front of me, and therefore I have to make a compensation with my hips or something else to try to get outside partner, or I end up just bashing into my partner. Neither uh, outcome is what we were looking for. So gentlemen, leads, let's make sure if I use again um, a foam roller just to demonstrate exactly where my body is alignment is, one, two, here's my body alignment towards the camera. My foot alignment is over there, diagonal wall just away from the camera. Then as I continue, there would be my step number three in CBMP. Ladies, follows as we are dancing our feather finish. Here we are dancing, oh, I'm gonna dance it this way as well. Dancing forward, step number one, I'm stepping forwards with my left foot. Step number two, we are wanting now, ladies, to do a two-part action through our right foot. Part number one, as we swing that right foot to the side, is it's going to be placed on a toe, or really a ball, inside edge of a ball of foot, um, towards the wall. The alignment is wall. If we take the camera where, I, where my back is now, this is wall. But now, as I continue to transfer my weight onto that right foot to complete step number two, notice what's happening with my right foot. It continues to swivel on the ball of the right foot and finish backing diagonal to the wall. Yeah, a lot of the times ladies follows, we get the first part, which is step number one forwards and step number two here is first part, we go sideways, but then we forget or we're not sure that we have to do that added swivel. What ends up happening is we come across our foot in a diagonal position and we're not able to stay balanced or use our feet in a correctly efficient manner. So ladies, make sure that you understand on step number two, there's a quarter of a turn, a quarter of a turn at the beginning and then an additional eighth of a turn to equal three eighths of a turn. Let's move on to the intermediate level. Gentlemen, leads, yes, we are rising on the second step and yes, we do have a toe as a footwork for step number two. But what I want you to understand is that we are not going to rise as much as we usually would for some of the other dances, specifically the waltz. A lot of the time, gentlemen, we'll do step number one, we've got a compression, we swing up and rise onto a toe, we feel that toe and we get up nice and tall and that leg is nice and straight and then we come out ugh, and we struggle in the traveling of step number three, as well as the partnering where the lady feels like she gets quite heavy in our arms. So gentlemen, here's the little technique that I want you to understand is that when you're going and rising, you will have foot rise, meaning your foot, your heel will come off the ground on step number two, but your left knee is going to stay slightly bent. It is going to absorb some of the rise. If you can see my heel is coming off the ground on my left foot down there. But if you notice, my head is not rising any further. So my hip, and my knee joints are absorbing some of the rise. 
So if I dance this now through the figure, step one, step two, yes, I'm going to rise through the foot, but I'm not gonna rise that much through the knee. Therefore, I'm a little bit more balanced and therefore I stay with my partner because gentlemen, leads, understand that the ladies have a no foot rise. They are not up on toes. They will do a toe heel after they do that swivel action like what we talked about in the previous segment. Ladies, let's talk to you about how you can use your joints so that you can travel more easily as well between step two and step three. So ladies, here we are, step one, left foot four, step two, we're swinging sideways. Now, as we do the swivel and we transfer the weight already, we understand that as intermediate level dancers, a lot of times, ladies, we feel the rise of the gentlemen, so we stay with them. And as we do, our hips start to come up. And we know that we have to shape, and so the hips come up and push forwards even more because we're trying to shape. And then we end up falling backwards and getting pushed over, especially from the gentleman. And it feels really uncomfortable. Ladies, I want you to incorporate a softening of your standing hip to dance backwards from step two to step three. A softening of the hip to dance backwards. I'm going to dance again this way, and then I'm gonna go diagonal to the wall. And as I travel through my right foot, this is step number two right here, and now I'm traveling backwards in CBMP. I want to make sure that this hip, ladies, if you notice, my bum is going further. It is flexing through the hip. There is more articulation through the hip, and then I keep on going. I do not want to feel like I'm pushing my bum underneath and pushing my hip forwards as I'm traveling backwards. We want to make sure that hip continues to go backwards. An exercise that I want you to do, ladies, is to make sure that you understand that you can move backwards by creating this little hip crease. And when I'm doing this action, ladies, you can see I place my hands right in my groin area right here. And as I go backwards, standing, especially on my right, you can do this on your left as well. But specifically for this figure, we're doing this on the right foot. Notice how the crease is getting deeper. We are not keeping it very shallow. Here, my hip is very open instead of closed. I want you to feel there's this closure. That closure will help to articulate and mobilize the hip joint, and we're able to now travel more easily backwards into step number three of the feather finish. Gentlemen, ladies, for the advanced level, we want to talk more specifically about how we're creating sway, yeah? So specifically, there are going to be two different now um, components to sway that I want you to understand, or I should say two different types of sway that I want you to incorporate within this figure. First part is going to be related to a hip pendulum action, yeah? So let's just call this for now hip sway, yeah? And the second part is going to be more through the upper body, through the levity center, through the shoulders, up at the shoulder blade level, and you can say quite high through the rib cage, not too low, but a little bit higher, and we can call this, we'll call this an upper spine sway. So we've got our hips and our upper spine sway. Now, as we're dancing our feathers finish, a lot of the times, and gentlemen, let's go through your steps first. Step one, step two, at advanced level dancers, we understand there's a pendulum action. So there's a sway that starts to be created. But we know that step number three also has sway to the right and we maintain that hip sway dancing through the feather finish. What ends up happening is that we again impede or we slow ourselves down too much. We counterbalance, counterbalance our movement into and through step number three because we have so much hip sway from the pendulum swing from step one to step two. What we want to understand is we need to now change. We need to modify. We need to metamorphosize the sway from the hips through now the upper body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my foam roller and a rolled up yoga mat. Let's go through this visually. So gentlemen, oh, let's just do this once here in the camera. So this is the direct, this is the, the way that it looks like if I'm just now doing a hip sway. Notice how my upper spine or my, my yoga mat up here and my lower body, my hips, which is the foam roller here, they are very parallel. They're matching each other. Now, as we create upper spine sway, if you notice, the foam roller is a lot more stable. It is more horizontal, but there's still flexibility through my upper back, and therefore you can see 
the yoga mat changing its angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the second, sorry, this first to second action, which is now this, the sway through the hips. And then the hips are going to neutralize a little bit more as I go through step two, but I will maintain a little bit of sway now through my upper body. If you can see now the yoga mat has a little bit of sway to the right, whereas the foam roller is more neutral or horizontal. Ladies, we're going to do the exact same thing. So as we're now going, uh, I'll do it this way actually, so that we can see the foam rollers and the yoga mat. We're gonna go step one forward, step two. Here is now my pendulum swing and sway. The both of the both of the tools are being quite parallel. As I transfer my weight, here is my swivel again. My hips will neutralize a little bit more, not fully as a gentleman, but a little bit more and my upper body will still create some sway. There we go. Ladies, because the hips are going backwards, there will still be some sway and there'll be a little bit more sway for the follows than there will be for the leads as the leads are going forwards. Yeah, one of the exercises I just want you to do is you can put two tools like this and be able to visualize which kind of sway am I doing? Is this more of a pendulum lower body action or is this more of an upper body action? and understand that they're they're not neither one is correct and neither one is false or wrong oops um, but they are used at different times within our dancing all right so we've covered foot actions we've covered hip actions and we've covered body or sway actions Whew, the feather finish interesting simple figure but boy boy there's a lot going on with this figure as usual ladies and gentlemen please feel free to comment uh, down below. Make sure you subscribe and do all that stuff. There are, there, are, there are things up here. I forget which side they are, but go ahead and click uh, the videos and the subscription um, and that will really help you stay connected um, and know when we upload the next videos. That's it for now. Teacher Will saying thank you very much again for watching these videos. It really, uh, really means a lot to me and to Clara as well, who's behind the scenes and helping me put these videos together. That's it for now. We'll see you next week. Not week. Tomorrow.